Thank you, colleagues. Our next item is topical questions. And our first question is from Lee MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government for what reason it has reportedly agreed with the SBFL to keep information regarding the extent of sectarianism at football confidential and whether it will publish this data. Cabinet Secretary Hamza Youssef. Well, I strongly agree with the member that we need robust data to understand unacceptable conduct at football and to take actions necessary to address it. Uh, the data is collated by the football authorities, not the Scottish Government. Uh, it was only provided on the basis that it was, and I quote, confidential and is not published. However, our clear and consistent preference has been for this data to be published. Uh, therefore, I've spoken to SPFL Chief Executive Neil Doncaster today to reiterate this once again, and we'll follow up uh, in writing. Um, he confirmed, and the SPFL have confirmed, that they are committed to discuss this positively at their next board meeting. Uh, it's only through open and honest discussion based on robust evidence that we can work with all of our partners to tackle the unacceptable conduct by some and a minority of spectators, which unfortunately continues to shame our national game. Lee MacArthur. <coughs> I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but the recommendation from Professor Duncan Morrow could not be clearer. Ministers, football authorities and the police should work together on the monitoring of sectarian incidents. Findings should be, quote, published annually to allow for a genuine debate about the extent of sectarian behaviour and attitudes in football. The joint Liberal Democrat nil by mouth uh, investigation shows that the government did reach agreement with the SPFL. The football authorities have been collating data for the past two seasons in secret. Nobody but ministers and the police has ever seen it. They never will, unless something changes. Will the Cabinet Secretary rip up the secrecy agreement and publish today, in full, the contents of the sectarianism database? Cabinet Secretary. Can I say to Liam MacArthur that I recognise his interest and, of course, general public interest uh, in this issue. And can I also say to him that I do agree with him, that I do think this data should be published. That's not just my view as Cabinet Secretary for the last year, but my predecessor with whom the agreement was reached, he, he wrote in 2017, I'll put a copy of his letter into Spice, and I'll quote directly from his letter to Neil Doncaster at the time, it's difficult to see how the building of public confidence can be achieved without being open and transparent with the data gathered. I'm therefore disappointed that the data gathered will not be publicly available, and I hope that you will reconsider this decision. Uh, and the serious point that I know Liam MacArthur does understand is that this is not the Scottish Government's data. This is data collated by match officials. Uh, the agreement was reached. If we wanted to have that data, that it would be in the proviso that it was confidential uh, and, and that it was not for publishing. So it's not in my gift to just rip up, as he suggests, uh, an agreement with a stakeholder that could be potentially actionable uh, if I do that. Rather, what I've done this morning is spoken to Neil Doncaster through dialogue and conversation, asked him once again to reconsider the SPFL's objection to that, in fairness to Neil Doncaster, he took a very constructive approach to that telephone conversation, has agreed that he'll put that forward to the board at the next board meeting, and I hope through that dialogue we get to a place where that data can be very readily published. But I hope the member understands that it is not within my gift to just rip up that uh, agreement and discussion and to just publish the data today. Lee MacArthur. Again, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response, but it seems inconceivable that the government would sign up to an arrangement that's effectively gagged it uh, by the SPFL. The Scottish Government's own independent commission asked for this data to be recorded and published annually to inform a proper public debate. Serious com uh, conversations about options like strict liability are impossible if the figures are kept secret. And that calls into question just how seriously those who have the data are working to lift the curse affecting Scottish football. I too would like to hear from Neil Doncaster because the SPFL's response has been to date, quite frankly, pathetic. Isn't it the case that if their response to sectarianism is dependent on secrecy and gagging orders, they don't deserve to be running the game? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I just say to Lee McCall once again that we are in agreement that the data should be published. So there's not a, a difference of, or, or disagreement between Liam MacArthur and I around that. But of course, for us to be able to get this data, which in turn has helped us to focus where our intervention should be, focus our discussion on what he calls, rightly I think, the curse surrounding our national game, then to get that data, we had to agree, up, had to agree that it wouldn't be published because it's not our data. It's not my data to be able to publish. It's collected by match officials and therefore belongs to the clubs and the SPFL and the cup games 
uh, belongs to the SFA. But I am in agreement. I had a very positive conversation with Neil Doncaster this morning. As I say, he's taking that forward to his board. I hope that his board will see sense in this issue uh, and that they will agree to publish that data. And in terms of lifting uh, the curse from my game, I can tell you about, of course, the, 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 the number of projects that were funded, including the one that he mentions uh, in his question. I should say also this government has taken action. Our Offensive Behaviour Football Act, of course, was part of that action. This parliament chose to repeal uh, that, uh, of course. But we will continue to intervene where we think appropriately. Uh, and of course, I agree with him once again, and I state this for the record, that there should be transparency, and therefore my wish and my desire is that the SPFL and the SFA choose to publish this data. Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, Cameron Secretary, people feel like this is secret Scotland again. Uh, not only are the SPFL keeping the dossier secret, but they'll feel like the SNP government are sticking by them in not forcing their hand, whilst admittedly making the right noises. People will feel like it's sweeping sectarianism under the carpet. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell us, is there an actual signed agreement not to publish, which could be, to use Liam MacArthur's words, ripped up? And can you promise there are no other instances of the SNP government covering up or withholding information in this way? Cabinet Secretary. Again, I think the, the hyperbole with which the member raises the question does the, the actual issue reveal to service. I mean, what we have here uh, is, is data that belongs to the SPFL, belongs to the clubs. Uh, the only way we could get that uh, data uh, was, of course, uh, by uh, signing up to those agreements of, of not publishing. And that has helped us in terms of our interventions. Uh, I, again, make the mention that my colleague here on my right, my predecessor, wrote to the SPFL at the time in 2017 very clearly saying that our position was that the data should be released uh, and indeed that, uh, that hoping that the SPFL would reconsider the decision uh, not to, to, to release. Um, as I said, that action, if we were to just release the data, could potentially uh, be actionable. What we are doing, though, is understanding there is a, a real public interest in this. I absolutely understand that public interest and therefore my, uh, the onus is on, 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 on the SPFL to, to reflect on that. They've said they will. They've said they will present it at the next board meeting. And I hope for a very positive conclusion to that. James Dornan, to be followed by James Kelly. James Dornan. Thank you, President Officer. As the Cabinet Secretary is aware, I've been leading a campaign for Scottish football clubs and authorities to introduce strict liability to crack down on fan trouble. Although I'm looking at bringing in my own legislation, it's always been my preference that Scottish football implements it uh, themselves. And whilst I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's comments through the discussion with Neil Doncaster, does the Minister not agree with me that it's incumbent on both these organisations to publish their own data themselves. And if they don't, people will continue to believe that Scottish football believes they're a law unto themselves and has no real inclination to make the necessary changes to clean up the game or that they have something to hide. And will the Cabinet Secretary continue to push the PFL and the SFA to release these figures before that something to hide looks like something serious to hide? I think the SPFL and, and the SFA would, would do well to reflect on uh, you know, just how they, they are viewed by not just parliamentarians but, but the public uh, on this issue uh, if they do not be uh, as open and transparent as I would like them and clearly Parliament would like them uh, to be with, with the data. I think that's an important point. What I would say on the flip side to James Donner is I have had some very positive and constructive conversations with both the SFA, the SPFL and in fact wider stakeholders in football from the PFA, the referees associations, supporters organisations, as well as individual clubs. Uh, and there is, I detect, uh, from my conversations, a real desire to do something uh, in relation to unacceptable conduct. Of course, that varies uh, in terms of what that should be. Um, but I'm going to take those conversations forward. Uh, I reiterate, we want the, the SPFL to publish this data. Um, I hope that they will. And I hope they come to that conclusion uh, at their next board meeting. And James Kelly. Thank you. To ensure a, a positive and constructive discussion about tackling unacceptable conduct and promoting uh, a positive supporter experience, all verified and accurate data should be in the public domain. I think it's fair to say that the engagement from some clubs and football authorities has been inadequate in recent times. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what action the government are taking to ensure that clubs and football authorities engage more positively in this debate in order to ensure a more positive atmosphere at football. Can I, say can, can I thank James Kelly for that question and for the constructive uh, manner in which he asks it. Uh, you know, I've, I've taken a range of actions uh, forward because 
uh, I think if there's, there's many lessons to learn over the years on, on how we approach this subject, uh, I'm trying to take as many people with us uh, on that journey. Now, there are a range, and I think James Kelly will understand this, a range of views on how to tackle unacceptable conduct that go from strict liability uh, right the way through to, as they say, a variety of range of options. Um, I've had some good ideas. I'm happy to talk to James Kelly, perhaps offline, if he, if he wishes, around where I think the lay of the land is and amongst the clubs, the various stakeholders. Uh, but we are starting to build a coalition of those who are, who are um, building consensus about what we need to do. Those conversations will continue. I hope to have those conversations well into the summer and ahead of the start of, 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 of the new season. But I detect there is some movement uh, and there is a willingness. But I agree with his central premise, which is that whatever we do should be done in, in a way that is open and transparent. And therefore, I hope that the SPFL will reflect on, on, on this uh, session uh, in the chamber and they will come to a positive conclusion at their next board, board meeting uh, and release this uh, data and publish it uh, into the public domain. Question number two, Stuart Stevenson. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with CERCO about the recent disruption to the Caledonian sleeper service. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Yeah, the Scottish Government is in daily dialogue with Caledonian sleeper on this issue and receives daily status updates on train operations and new train status. The current disruption has been caused by damage to the train's wheels following an incident last Tuesday night forcing withdrawal of a number of carriages. Caledonian Sleeper is contacting affected passengers with service updates and with the offer of alternative travel or refunds. We anticipate that services will return to normal schedule by the end of this week. Stuart Stevenson. Um, is the technical fault uh, on the carriage tyres to be believed to be as a result of a one-off incident or a design flaw or some other reason? Uh, whilst uh, CERCO have yet to reach a 100% conclusion in this matter, their initial cause of the incident leading to the subsequent wheel damage has been the result of the incorrect setting up of the train control management system as opposed to it being a technical failure uh, and they're continuing to investigate this matter going forward. Stuart Stevenson. Um, is customer feedback about the new sleeper rolling stock indicating that this is a service that will continue to be an important contributor uh, to our tourism industry once we're able to put the current difficulties behind us? Second officer, whilst there has been initial teething problems with the new rolling stock, there is positive feedback from passengers in the four-week period from the launch of the new trains on the 28th of April. Caledonia Sleeper reports sale levels of 13% higher than in previous years. It does no doubt in my mind that the Caledonia Sleeper it is indicate, the new rolling stock in the Caledonia Sleeper is indicating uh, an increased confidence in uh, those seeking to make use of the service. And I've got absolutely no doubt that it will continue to be a significant contributor to tourism and our wider, wider economy in the years ahead. Jamie Green to be followed by Colin Smith. Jamie Green. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I think invariably the Cabinet Secretary will agree with me that any new service uh, will have teething issues and Circo are not the only company that have suffered with manufacturing issues uh, in delivery of new carriages and services. But I think there's a shared desire, hopefully, amongst all of us in the Chamber to see this new service succeed and deliver for passengers on both sides uh, of the border. But can I ask if the Cabinet Secretary has any further update or discussion uh, with the operator around delays to the Fort William and Inverness routes, which were uh, due to come into play, and I believe that timetable has been delayed. Uh, is there an update to the uh, uh, onboarding of, of that new service, and uh, what further uh, measures will the government take to ensure that all of Scotland benefits from these new carriages? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, it's, of course, it is uh, uh, not uncommon for uh, uh, technical problems to occur in new rolling stock, uh, not just in the railways, but in any walk of life uh, when new, uh, uh, new rolling stock, whether or new aeroplanes or boats, whatever it may be, that there can be technical issues initially when they are being rolled out. Um, as it stands at the present moment, uh, CERCO advises that they continue to expect the final introduction of a Caledonia sleeper on the Highland service to be introduced on the 7th of July this year, which was the time frame that they'd initially uh, set. Clearly, the delay in all of this has been CAF, who are responsible for manufacturing of these, uh, of this, the, the new rolling stock, which had, has a significant delay. They were due to have been introduced in April of last year, but the failure of CAF has resulted in 
uh, such a marked delay. But I know the member has uh, made use of the new facilities on the Caledon Sleeper, which are far superior to what was there previously and uh, will provide a very good service for the years ahead. But as it stands at the present moment, they still expect the Highlander aspect of the service to be introduced on the 7th of July. And Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The sleeper service has been plagued by the late delivery of rolling stock. It's seen almost a third of new services late or cancelled and has workers on the verge of strike action because of rising stress levels. Does the Cabinet Secretary not accept it's another example of a rail franchise where a private firm has overpromised and underdelivered, despite significant levels of taxpayers' money being invested, highlighting the failure of the franchise system itself? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it will not come as a surprise to the member that I'm not a fan of the franchising system within uh, rail services, and I wish this Parliament had the powers in order to change that, and I hope the member will support us in making that case to the Williams Review so that this Parliament can choose what is the best route uh, for providing rail services in Scotland in the future that doesn't necessarily include that of uh, franchising. Uh, the member will recognise that the primary reason for the delay uh, uh, around this particular service has been CAF, who are the manufacturers of these uh, new carriages, which has had a marked impact on the ability to to roll out the uh, new service and uh, clearly the issues around uh, some of the technical issues that have been identified on the new rolling stock are matters which CERCO are pursuing uh, with uh, CAF but as part of the franchise agreement we have uh, penalties within the uh, franchise agreement to deal with issues which relate to such delays as uh, and anything to do with CAF is a matter for CERCO to take forward but we do have arrangements in place as part of the franchise uh, to apply penalties to CERCO for a failure to deliver on the services that they have undertaken to do as part of the franchise. Thank you very much. And that concludes general questions.